Hi, I'm Steve at the Carmichael Workshop. Today I'm making a pedal board for my guitar effect pedals. I made a pedal board about two years ago, and as guitar players usually do, I've swapped out some pedals and bought some new ones. So now I need a new pedal board to fit everything on it. So let's take a look at what I've got. I've laid out all my pedals how I want them to get a feel for how big this pedal board needs to be. I've got a wah pedal on the right side and then across the bottom I've got six of these single size pedals and then across the top I've got three of these larger pedals. And one thing I found that really saves space on the pedal layout are these flat cables. Uh, they really reduce the space here between each pedal uh, so I can make everything more compact. I'm making this pedal board out of this half inch Baltic birch plywood and I want to run all of these patch cables and power cables underneath the board so it gives it a nice clean look. So I've taken measurements of each pedal and also the gaps in between and kind of planned out where I need to place holes in the plywood uh, to make sure I can run all these cables underneath. So let's head over to the computer and take a look at my design. I used the Inventables Easel Pro software to draw up my design. First I entered the overall dimensions of my pedal board, which are 24 by 12 by half an inch. I drew some basic rectangles to represent the pedals so I could lay out how I want them placed so I got identified where I need to put holes in the plywood. I added larger rectangles between the pedals for the guitar signal cables. Then I drew some smaller rectangles so the power cables could pass through and plug into the top of the pedals. I spaced them out evenly and even though the pedals on the top row are twice as wide, I used the same pattern in case I want to replace them with smaller size pedals. I left some extra space on the right side for the larger Wawa pedal. After I figured out where all the holes need to be placed, I deleted the shapes that represent the pedals and then I was left with the holes that need to be carved. To get started, I'm going to cut two pieces of 12 by 24 inch plywood for the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to use the Inventables X-Carve CNC machine to cut the holes in the top. I'd like to thank Inventables for sponsoring this project video. If you're interested in trying out the Easel Pro software or shopping for an X-Carve, click the referral link in the video description below. Thanks to you and Inventables for helping to support my channel. got the top and the bottom cut so now I'm gonna work on the four sides that'll make up the box. In easel I drew left and right side pieces that will angle the top back to make the pedals easier to step on. I also designed a piece to cover the front. I decided to get a little fancy and use a diamond pattern from the easel pro library. They have tons of decorative elements to choose from. I put the diamond pattern on both the front board and the side pieces. Let's go carve them out. I mounted this small piece of half inch birch plywood onto the X-Carve for the side pieces. First, I'm going to carve out the diamond pattern with this 90 degree V bit, and then I'm going to change bits and then cut those out with an eighth inch bit.
The pedal board is starting to take shape and I do need to cut this front piece to the right height. And I've made a mark here because the side piece is at a seven degree angle. So I wanna make sure I match that angle there. And then I'll use some of this leftover piece up here to cut a thin piece to go on this side to close that in. I flipped this off cut piece around so that the angle matches up with the side piece. So now I just need to make a straight cut here. Alright, I've got all the pieces cut and I'm just going to give everything a good sanding. Then I'm going to glue together the four sides and glue those to the underside of the top. And I'm just going to screw on the bottom, that way I'll have access to the inside to route the wiring. going to spray a few coats of the satin clear lacquer on the pedal board and then I just need to attach some rubber pads to the bottom and also attach the bottom to the top part and I'm going to attach all my pedals using velcro and then wire everything up. Here's my finished pedal board and I think it turned out looking really cool with this diamond pattern around the sides. Uh, let's take a closer look. I love the way you can see the stripes in the diamonds from the plywood and my guitar cable will just plug in here. On this side I have the jack to the power adapter so I can just plug it in here and then plug it into the wall. Uh, this ABY switch it goes out to my amplifier for switching channels and this Vox unit here is a foot switch for the amp as well. It turns on the reverb and the tremolo. And this EVH flanger pedal is special. It calls for an 18 volt adapter. So I can just plug that in there and then plug it into the wall as well. Here you can see it from the player's point of view and how all the cables go down through the holes underneath uh, to give it a nice clean look. Thanks again to Inventables for sponsoring this project. I'll put links to everything I mentioned in the description below. There will be a referral link to Inventables if you want to shop for an X-Carve. Uh, you can also try out their Easel Pro software. And I'll put a link to this project on the Inventables site where you can actually open this project in the Easel software and you could download the template for the top. Or if you have an X-Carve, you could carve one out yourself. And I'll also put an Amazon affiliate link in the description below for these little flat uh, patch cables that I found that save space on the pedal board. So as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, click that like button, and share this video. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.